Hello everyone, welcome to Pharma Thoughts. Episode 2 GMP Introduction. So today we are going to touch upon the basics of GMP. Agenda for this presentation are what is GMP and where do we find the GMPs? What is the difference between a regulation and a guidance? What are some of the examples of GMP regulations and some of the examples of GMP guidances? And what is the difference in these contents GMP guidance versus GMP regulation and whether these are same or are there any differences and why GMP is required and outcomes of GMP compliance so we are going to discuss these topics so to start with the first question is what is GMP anyone who is working in pharma industry will immediately answer to this question as good manufacturing practices but what you are doing is you are giving the full form for the abbreviation GMP as good manufacturing practices. But if I further ask, what is good manufacturing practices? Or what are good manufacturing practices? And where do you find? What are the contents of good manufacturing practices? So immediately, most of the people may not, may not be able to answer them. So let us see what are those. And uh, there is no fixed definition for good manufacturing practices, but while reading uh, through while reading through the stuff related to good manufacturing practices I found these two statements are the most near uh, or the very apt uh, in defining the GMP requirements so I've captured these two here so let us go through them good manufacturing practice is a system for ensuring that products are consistently produced and controlled according to quality standards it is designed to minimize the risks involved in any pharmaceutical production that cannot be eliminated through testing the final product. And GMP covers all aspects of production from the starting materials, premises and equipment to the training and personal hygiene of staff. What it says is, it is a system. GMP is a system so that we ensure that products are consistently produced and controlled according to quality standards. When we follow GMP, we are ensuring that the products are consistently produced and uh, controlled according to the quality requirements. Why we need GMP? GMP is required so that it will minimize the risks involved in any product, pharmaceutical production, those risks which cannot be eliminated through final product testing. So we know that when we manufacture a product, we normally do the final product testing. We do lot of testing raw material testing in process testing intermediate testing and then final product testing so we we cannot we can someone may argue like i am doing the final product testing and ensuring that it is meeting the requirements why don't i uh, why don't i i can release the product but it is not enough because final product testing is not completely sufficient or it doesn't give you complete assurance that the product is meeting the required uh, actual requirements so finished product testing is a part of GMP but it cannot replace the GMPs and what do uh, we are going to see that in next coming slides uh, what do GMP covers it covers all aspects of production from the receipt of raw materials to the manufacturing to the premises to the equipment training of the personal and personal hygiene everything from receiving of raw materials till the dispatch of final product GMP covers all aspects where to find GMPs where where can I see where can I read about GMPs normally GMPs are obtained from regulations and guidances so before going to the actual GMP regulation and GMP guidance we will see uh, what are the differences between regulation and guidance regulation versus guidance so basically regulation is a force of law and is legally binding regulation is made by the government or, and it is required by the law if we don't follow a regulation we are prone to be penalized by the government and all the regulations are mandatory to be com compliant we have to meet we have to compulsorily meet comply with the regulations 
and the main requirement of regulations is high priority for production of public health and remember one more point is regulations prescribe minimum requirements that needs to be followed whereas a guidance document these are recommendations and normally the regulatory authorities may also sometimes publish guidances guidance documents or some other individual uh, agencies authority uh, bodies can also publish the guidances these are recommendations but though they are not legally binding in nature these guidances elaborate on the minimum requirements that were prescribed in the regulation so always it is better we follow the guidance also uh, most of the times if we see fda guidances us fda guidances the common statement they mention on the guidances it describes the agency's current thinking on a regulatory issue so if there is a minimum regulatory requirement that needs to be meeting and that needs to be met then the us fda also publishes a guidance related to that particular subject which will reflect the current thinking of the agency and most of the times uh, when we follow the guidance they provide suggestions on control systems and carpa actions optimization of and the main objective of guidance documents is optimization of the systems and procedures leading to protection of public health either it is a regulation or guidance the ultimate goal is for the protection of the public health let us see some of the regulations which which are specific to the gmp so each country or most of the countries in, across the world have their own individual regulatory authority regulatory body which controls all the aspects related to the drugs in india cdsco central drug standard control organization is the body which is responsible for drug uh, regulation implementation the gmp regulations for india can be found in drugs and cosmetics act under schedule m drugs and cosmetics act has different schedules among those schedule m prescribes the good manufacturing practices and requirements of premises plant and equipment for pharmaceutical products so the gmp requirements are mentioned in schedule m and in united states food and drug administration normally we call us fda this is the regulatory agency that is responsible for controlling the food and drug uh, uh, regulations so 21 cfr part 210 and part 211 these are the two sections uh, that covers the regulations for cgmp cfr means code of federal regulations and similarly australia canada china europe japan each country has their own regulatory authority and here we have given the gmp regulations mentioned in their respective uh, gmp acts or in their respective law gmp guidances apart from the gmp regulations there are certain gmp guidances which are published by different agencies for example international council for harmonization of technical requirements for pharmaceuticals for human use we normally call it as ich so ich has published one gmp guidance uh, the number of this particular guide is q7 title is good manufacturing practice guide for active pharmaceutical ingredients so in this ich q7 we find the gmp guidance for apis pharmaceutical inspection cooperation scheme pics it is an individual body which has published the gmp guide in pe 00914 part 1 pe 00914 part 2 so these two guides provide gmp requirements for both apis as well as finished products who world health organization also published the uh, gmp principles main principles for pharmaceutical products which can be seen in annex 2 of technical report series number 986 so these are some of the examples for gmp guidances so what is it what are the contents of this guidance or regulation what do they state let us see so if we see uh, gmp for api as per ichq7 there are 20 sections and which states i mean and the contents of the guide is first section starts with introduction then they describe the requirements of quality management system then personal requirements buildings and facilities process equipment documentation and records material management production and in process controls packaging and identification labeling of apis and intermediates 
storage and distribution, laboratory controls, validation, change control, rejection and reuse of materials, complaints and recalls, etc. So there are 20 sections. The guide is divided into 20 sections and each section elaborates the requirements for that particular area. Whereas drug product for manufacturing the final drug product, we have Code of Federal Regulations 21 CFR Part 211 in which is divided as subpart A, B through K. So there are 11 sections which describe the requirements for a drug product GMP. They contain normally general provisions, organization and personnel, buildings and facilities, equipment, control of components and drug product containers and closures, production and process controls, packaging and labeling control, holding and distribution, laboratory controls, records and reports, return and salvage drug products. These both the guidance and regulations are freely available on internet. Anyone who is interested to learn more about these guidance and regulations can freely download the copies and go through the same. How a GMP guidance and regulations are different? How much different or are they similar? So let us see. If we see, if we compare the sections of both the guidance as well as regulations or upon the 11 sections mentioned in the drug product regulations, nine sections are similar to the drug substance sections and these are all critical sections and most of the, uh, the basic GMP requirements does not differ much for APIs or finished products. It is almost similar. The basic logic or the requirements will not differ. Only the processing part or some of the minute details may differ. If we see personal which is mentioned in Q7 is reflected as organization and personal in drug product requirements. Buildings and facilities it is same. We have a section for process equipment. Here we have a section for equipment. We have a section uh, for documentation and records. Here we have a section for records and reports. We have a section for production and in-process controls. Again, we have a section for production and process controls. Packaging and labeling, packaging and labeling, storage and distribution, holding and distribution, laboratory controls, laboratory controls, rejection and reuse of materials, return and salvage drug products. So the basic requirements of GMP does not differ much for both drug substance and drug product. So why GMP is required? So having said all these requirements, why we need to follow the GMP? Normally, consumer cannot detect through smell, smell, touch or sight that a drug product is safe or it will work. If you have to purchase a TV, we go to a shop, we see the demo, we ensure that it is working, we connect it to uh, the uh, power, we see if it is working and we purchase it. If we need to purchase a shed, we go to the shop, we wear, we trial, we do a trial of the shed, we see the stitching, we see the color, we see the clothing and once we are satisfied with this we will purchase the shirt so there we are getting a chance to test the quality of the product before purchasing it or before using it even though if there are some problems after purchasing the shirt or tv it is not life-threatening situation we can always return it back and get a new product whereas when it comes to the matter of medicines nobody can say that if it is safe or if it will work cannot be set when it comes to the medicines or drugs and testing is done on small sample of a batch for example 100 tablets that from a batch that contains 2 million tablets or 50 grams from a batch of 500 kg and in an APA facility a 500 kg or a thousand kg of one batch is manufactured and 50 grams is sampled and it is tested can we assure the quality of 500 gram 500 kg material or 20 lakh tablets based on these 100 tablets and say yes it is meeting we can release no and quality cannot always be tested the final product testing is part of gmp but final product testing cannot replace the requirement of gmp and um, last but not least not following GMP makes a product adulterated and it may result in recall seizure fines and jail time so GMP is also a legal requirement as per regulations if we don't follow GMP apart from the above requirements 
even we are legally non-compliant which may result in fines and jail times outcomes of GMP compliance what happens if we follow GMP if we follow GMP we produce quality products we will be assuring that the identity strength quality and purity of drugs are as per the requirements we build the quality into product rather than testing the quality and of course we are complying to all legal requirements which makes us happy increased business opportunities obviously when the quality is good the business is good and last but not least you may be the customer for what you are manufacturing so always try to follow all the requirements and follow the GMP so these are the references that we have gone through for in preparation of uh, this presentation thank you for watching the video if you have any clarifications or suggestions please write to us at pharmathoughts1 at gmail.com thank you have a nice day